The costumes from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice are on display in the DC booth at New York Comic Con. And we got a chance to chat with costume designer Michael Wilkinson about all the cool secrets of his designs. So tell me a little bit about how you came up with the new costume for Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Well, it was definitely a labor of love. We all feel so passionately about all of these characters. You know, they've been around for such a long time. They mean so much to so many people. So we made sure we did our homework and we really looked into the histories of all of these characters. Then I got busy um, drawing, working with an amazing team of illustrators. It was about a year from the time that I, I started ask, the yeah. job until we actually started filming that we had to develop the costume. So we really had the time to Obsess about every square inch of them. <laughs> you know, Zack Snyder gave us such a clear direction about where he yeah. wanted to go with these costumes. When we were designing the Superman costume, what Zack and I really wanted to bring across was textures that weren't necessarily from our known world. This costume was created on another planet with alien technology. There's also some subtle differences in the belt, the uh, buckle, the glyph itself. Mm -hmm. um, Zach loved the idea that there was actually some Kryptonian script embedded in the suit, yeah. but he gave me this fantastic quote that he wanted us to translate into Kryptonian okay. and incorporate into the script. It sort of deals with the nature of power and the responsibility that comes with power. For Batman, it was really important for Zach that we created a whole new Batman. He said the most important thing for our Batman is that he comes across as a really hulking, big guy. He's yeah. super pumped up. Um, he's going to be even bigger than Superman in silhouette. And so his strength is not through armor and like gadgets and things, but it's just he's like a tower of, of muscle. Yeah. Zack Snyder is a real fan of um, Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. Yep. And we, we looked a lot at that silhouette when we were creating our silhouette. But the cowl I'm super proud of. It was amazing yeah. sort of feat of engineering. It's always been a big thing of like the can whole, he actually can he actually see turn, turn his, his head? head. Yeah. But it does allow a full range of movement. He can do all of his stunts in the cowl. So with Wonder Woman, uh, what uh, Zach's talked to me about is creating a character who has an incredible power and strength. Her presence as a warrior is completely legitimate and unquestionable, but at the same time has kind of a, a grace and elegance mm -hmm. of the Amazonian culture. You know, it's quite a formal culture. Their way of fighting is very, very disciplined. Yeah. And so we wanted to sense that majesty with, with her look. And I think when you talk about Wonder Woman, you can't not ask about the lasso and the bracers. The of, of truth. <laughs> yep, that we worked really closely with the props department to work on sort of crossover with the shield, the lasso, the sword. Can the bracers deflect bullets along with heat vision and are they supernatural? Well, you know, Diana is immortal, so she's been around for a long time. She does have powers that are beyond human, so uh, when we were creating our textures, we were referring to different metals that exist, but also creating new finishes of metals that might have this kind of supernatural kind of power to them. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we created something that's kind of original and eye-catching. Our excitement for Batman v Superman is matched only by our enthusiasm for Dark Knight 3 The Master Race. And Frank Miller is back at DC to finish off his epic adventure. All right, Dan, how did Dark Knight 3 come about? Did Frank Miller just call you up on the phone and say, I want to do this book? You know, um, it came about a couple of ways. You know, Jim and I were both very excited about trying to work with Frank again, you know. Um, we had come out of, um, before Watchmen, we had started the Sandman Project, and we were trying to look at all those, those great things that, you know, really are identified with DC Comics. And Frank's work on Dark Knight is one of those things that just is just a seminal body of work. Um, so we reached out to Frank and we had some conversations going with Frank about, about some of the characters. And, you know, we were actually asking, honestly, what we were doing was we were asking him about whether or not we wanted to put Carrie Kelly um, in the main In line, the main DC. In the yeah, main yeah. DC. And we started to do that and we were getting down that road. And, and Frank basically said, rather than do Carrie Kelly in there, why don't we do another story with Carrie Kelly? Oh. And that sounded like another Dark Knight book. And I was always interested in doing something with the Dark Knight universe, you know, taking those characters and as those interpretations and expanding on them. Uh, and it originally started out something as Dark Knight universe, but ultimately morphed into something that became basically, really? the, you know, the, the third part of the trilogy. So this is something Jim and I um, met with Frank on over a two year period of time. And then everything just came together. And Brian Azzarello, so integral to the entire project, he really worked with Frank every step of the way. Um, and the, the collaboration between Brian and Frank is really what's brought this book to life. Um, and then on top of that, um, just the icing on the cake was bringing Andy Kubert on the art, and uh, and then the, the piece de resistance is uh, Klaus Janssen's Inks. Of course, of which course. Which is which just pulls to be spectacular. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like reading that first script for Dark Knight Three? 
<laughs> I could. You, you know, what? A, you like you know what? It's funny. It it's funny. Yeah. You could say we could talk about reading the first script. The best one was when we first sat in a meeting and we're sitting there having a conversation. He's pitching the story, and for Frank, and you know, he's you see the the passion. His in passion every for word. Batman. Oh yeah, yeah, everything. His passion for Batman, and uh, he has scenes in here that really elevate. Everybody's always worried that in Frank's material that, that, that Superman gets punked a little, yeah, you yeah. know? So, but I mean, Batman beats up Superman Exactly, right? <laughs> I'm telling you right now, in this case, the, uh, the elevation of Superman as a character Whoa. is really something to see, something to behold. Batman's character is as strong as always, but it's really this intense world that he's created. And honestly, that's the reason why we did the mini-comic. Um, there's a really clear story that's, that deals with Superman, Batman, and, and Wonder Woman. Very clear story, the main story, but there's so many other characters that enrich it that what we wound up doing is that there's always a tangential aspect of what we do. Like the Atom is integral to the overall story, but didn't need to be in the main story in order to, to play his role. So what we've done is we've done the mini comics to really expand on their moments, their, their beats, and in, in a weird way, I got my little Dark Knight Universe book. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 in a, in a way, you the mini, it in. I did, the mini comics, the mini comics are the Dark Knight Universe books that I was looking for. So it's kind of fun when you see it all come together in this fashion. Now, Dan, specifically, what has it been like for you working with Frank Miller? You know, um, it's, it's great to work him on this project, but I'm actually gonna roll it back to when I first started at DC. Oh, okay. Okay, when I first started at DC Comics, um, my first fanboy moment as an employee uh, was meeting Frank Miller. And he was in Bob Shrek's office, and he works on these giant oversized pages, and he's there, and he's arguing, and screaming about everything, and talking about how, the, he says, you don't understand the rawness of the story, I'm scraping the pages with pen and nails to get the yeah. ink feeling across the lines. And I'm like, what the hell did I just walk into? <laughs> and then he, he was doing that description, and then he pulls this page out, and this giant oversized page of Frank Miller comes out, and I, it just froze me. It just froze me. And I'm, from that moment, you know, and I, I, that project had started by the time I got here, so it, like, I got a chance to see it, its evolution and its completion, but not the, the start of it. And to be involved in a Frank Miller project at the start is kind of exciting. We did it a little bit with yeah. the All-Star Batman and Robin, yeah. but this one, this one's got all his heart and soul on every single page. DC just unveiled a brand new Wonder Woman statue from DC Collectibles based off the costume design from Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. It hits stores in March 2016, so don't forget to start stashing those pennies in your piggy bank so you can pick her up. And also, don't forget to click subscribe to DC All Access. We're just as wonderful.